It's more than just your output, more than a bike. When you hear your shout out, you know it's all right. Put on your magic pants and let's go. We're cruising into the power zone. Clip in, set yourself free. Come on and take a ride with me. You know what you need to know and what's it all about. Everything you need, it's on the clip out. Welcome to the Clip Out Podcast, episode 355. This is Crystal O'Keefe. And this is Tom O'Keefe. We have new curtains for our podcast room, and it's so dark in here. I know. I'm used to, like, I sit right across from the little windows in our room, and so it's always right in my face, and now it's not. Well, I'm hoping at some point that uh, Kevin and I will get around to figuring out what a long-term lighting solution we want to do because there's so many different ways we use this room with different yeah. podcasts that it's hard to find one that's like uh, suitable for all around right and i'm tired of the ring lights <laughs> <laughs> me too i feel like we're always tripping over <laughs> but uh so i guess uh before we uh get too far afield let's do our bingo call out <laughs> getting there okay well, I tried. Okay, bingo number one this week, Benny Adami. There we go. Yeah. Okay. And we should also take a minute to remind people about the book club. Yes, we should. Uh, this week, it's it's is actually um, coming up so fast. Next week, we're going to be doing the book club. It's oh. April 9th. So it'll be April 9th, 7 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. Eastern. And we're discussing Made by Stephanie Land. Okay. And I should also let people know, just uh, not to brag, but the book I'm reading... How, how many, I what's just, your percent? I just got last night to the 51% mark. Wow. And I started reading it when we got done with the last book club. That's a month. Yeah. Now it is. Actually, a, you're going faster than I thought you were. <laughs> <laughs> because it's so long. I'm reading a very long book. Yeah. It's like. The dictionary. Re- it is. I'm reading the dictionary. Well, I figure I, you read the dictionary. Yeah. It's all the books. So you should know everything. Just not in order. That's true. But. I wouldn't, but once you read the dictionary, you're done. You're done. You got to read it once. It's going to take a long time, but then you're done. You're done with all the books all forever. The, I have read every book ever. <laughs> That's That's your my prevailing theory. All right. So, well, actually, the book I'm reading, people care because at heart, I'm a early 80s housewife. <laughs> I'm, I am reading The Winds of War. I, I, I got to tell you, it sounds real boring. No, you, you make it sound really boring. <laughs> you do. You do. You're like, uh, guess what? So-and-so almost slept with so-and-so. There's like, <laughs> been like three different points of the book where a different character almost had an affair. And I'm like, well, I mean, I'm glad people are staying faithful. Yeah, it's not. I'm, I, I'm that, a big fan of fidelity. But at the same time, it's fiction. But yeah, like you I'm can, reading I'm reading this for the drama. Right. Like I don't want to read Winds of Almost War. <laughs> right? Like when whew, thank God we averted that battle through peaceful diplomatic channels. Yeah. Like well, like, and that doesn't even feel like real life anymore. Yeah. So <laughs> like in real life, absolutely. Yet the yay peaceful diplomatic yay. channels. But in a book or a movie, well that's a snooze. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I want some drummers. <laughs> oh, your Jersey Shore is showing. Yeah. I want some drummers. So uh so anyway, that's wow, the Wow, we got way off track there. Yes, we did. I guess uh let's uh what do you got in store for people that's what i say here (laughs) it is well we have some interesting news that came out of peloton this week uh there's we're going to talk about ip enforcement we're Mm going to talk about the free guide outdoor running classes on the tread um the march updates what's going on with the row and the beta testing all of those things plus we have a visit from dr jen and we're going to talk about how to maintain your energy and your motivation uh then we have uh, a bunch of instructor news we're going to talk all about that a couple surprises on here this week um and then artist series we have a past guest update okay and uh i think that's it Okay, well, before we get to all that shameless plugs, don't forget we're available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, uh, iHeart, TuneIn, wherever you find a podcast, you can find us while you're there. Be sure and follow us so you never miss an episode. Maybe leave us a review. Yeah. We love that. We do. You can also uh, find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash 
the clip out while you're there like the page join the group and uh check out our mailing list <laughs> at theclipout.com where you get all the links and stuff sent to you every week because i know we throw a bunch at you and uh did you know that there's a whole other episode of the clip out that you're not getting every week i knew that well yeah because you you do the episode i do so i do it would be weird if you didn't know there about is it. so much on the bonus this week it's a lot that's two it's weeks a lot. Whoa, it's been quite a bit yeah so um uh you can find that over at patreon.com slash the clip out five bucks a month so it's not a lot it helps just fund all the things that uh that go into producing the show and it's a lot yeah um <laughs> But uh, but what you get in exchange for your five dollars is you get uh, bonus episodes weekly, which are normally like an additional 20 to 25 minutes of content. You also if we get the episodes early, you get them early. And then when you get the weekly episode, there are no ads. Yeah. So um, all the ads will be removed. And we also have things like the book club. Now, the book club is available for people on the free tier. So if you want to check out Patreon, but you don't want to throw us your money or you want to kind of dig around and there there is some free stuff over there like the book club. So swing on by and you can join up at patreon.com slash the clip out and then also don't forget you can watch all of these episodes over on youtube at youtube.com slash the clip out so uh that's it for uh for all this let's uh let's dig in shall we we shall peloton in the news so I'm really excited about this because I really enjoyed the Ryan Reynolds movie Free Guy. So I'm nope. looking forward to like Peloton's doing it. It's weird that they're doing this with a movie like Free Guy that came out a no. couple years ago. No. But what's it's, that? It's a free guide. Oh. Yeah. Never mind. Yeah. But you do get a free guide if yeah. if you buy certain equipment, pretty much any of it. Any equipment but the guide. Right. It's not a buy one get one free deal. No. So settle down. <laughs> no, but if you buy coupon clippers, <laughs> if you buy a row, bike, bike plus, tread, tread plus, any of the above, you get a free guide. I was wondering when they would do this. Yeah. So some people are suggesting this means that that's not real good for the guide. I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know how I feel about this. Does that mean that, or are they just trying another see what sticks to the wall? I don't know. <laughs> like you can totally read that either way, right? Like I like I get the argument of like, oh, they they're just blowing these things out and then they're done. Yeah. But then if that was but why would you put a guide in the hands of all these people and then go, We're done supporting this? Like that seems short sighted. I don't think it means they're gonna not support it either way. Yeah. Um I, I think that they're still doing a lot of work on the strength. Like I, I think that there's still a lot of new content coming out pretty pretty yeah. darn fast with with the strength. So I don't see that going away. But it does make me wonder like how many people are really buying these things in the background, even though they keep dropping them down to like yeah. ninety five bucks. <laughs> and that's my guess. And yeah. so I think the thought process is Let's get these into the hands of people. And maybe if you get enough out there and people start using them, they start talking about them and then you you sell them to other people. Yeah. I also think that, you know, they probably do have a very real value for people that like live in small apartments. Absolutely. You know, and they want another piece of Peloton equipment like this is a uh, an easy inexpensive option i have to bring up again that this is also the best deal like if you if you only get a guide and and i know that doesn't match if you were buying a piece of equipment you got it for free but if you're one of the people out there that you're like you want to be part of the peloton community and you're trying to figure out like which which is the best app tier and we can talk about this again later there's another place that this will make sense that the conversation the guide is your best bet right it is absolutely your best bet because it gets you that piece of equipment you can get uh you know an all access membership it's not all access it's called guide but you have access to all of the classes except like what's on the bike like you wouldn't get the scenic classes you wouldn't get the just ride things like that but other than that only classes you don't have access to but everything else you do yeah it's really the way to go and you get five people on it yeah so i also wonder if what you'll see here soon is the secondary market the resale market flooded with very inexpensive guides interesting because if you're buying a piece of equipment if you're buying a bike and it's like oh if i check this bike they just Uh, send me a free guide okay yeah and then you throw it on amazon not amazon you throw it on on facebook marketplace for 50 bucks yeah that's a good point 
Hmm. So if you're thinking about getting a guide, you might be able to pick them up fairly inexpensively here soon. That is true. There's so, all kinds of people trying to do weird things with the secondary market right now, too. That is true. Yeah. I work in the concert industry, so I'm very familiar with the secondary market. Yes, you are. And its impacts. Yes, you are. We saw an interesting post this week. We did. Yes, this was uh, from the You Get To crew. Yeah, and um, I don't remember exactly. I can't find it. I can't. Oh, so I'll read it. I was going to let you read it, but I'll read it. Okay. Okay. It says, hi, all Peloton related question. Has anyone had any Etsy listings removed for intellectual property reasons? I had a comma club sticker listed for months and it was just taken down, citing that Peloton reached out to them about infringement. I understand they're removing things saying Peloton or using the logo, but what I had listed strictly said comma club and i don't think that's something that's likely to be copyrighted by them thoughts yeah and um one of the comments that we included in the image that you can see there is that it is potentially um due to the fact that there is another instructor quote um collection coming from apparel and perhaps that's going to be one of the things and i don't know whether that is or isn't going to happen but i will say that um a lot of the instructors do use the comma club as part of their vernacular when they're celebrating a thousandth ride and you and i were talking about this this morning and you brought up the fact that they do over on tonal right that's not just a peloton thing they talk about the comma club on tonal like if your strength score gets over a thousand which mine is very close to. I know it's so cool. <laughs> Ten points away. That's awesome. So, um, but uh, but people say like, oh, I joined the comic club, yeah. and so like that's not a Peloton exclusive thing. But it does make you wonder, like, did they trademark that behind the scenes, and we just don't know it yet. It is a good question. That being said, it's weird that they would do copyright strikes on it if no one knows it. Yeah. Also like, true. You can't copyright something in secret and then go around and slap people for using it. Yeah. This isn't Soviet Russia. This isn't Russia. Danny, is it? <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> um, so it's it's interesting because, you know, people who haven't been in the Peloton world a long time may not know but there is a long and rich history of of, uh, of oh, playing whack-a-mole with etsy yeah, yeah and and like this goes back years and um peloton has gone through periods of time where they're very strict uh and they'll start having everything removed and then there's other periods of time where they're not as strict and yeah. i've definitely noticed in the last two to three years like it's kind of everywhere now like if you look on etsy for peloton there's about a billion different listings and i and i i thought that was interesting because it just felt like it went unchecked i will also say Peloton has had some other fish to fry for sure. over the last few years. Um, you know, I think that it has been more important to make sure that they are doing as well as possible fiscally before they start worrying about all of these different um, interle- intellectual property rights. And of Especially course... Especially on in a smaller area like Etsy. Like yeah. it's not like when Echelon violates their IP. No, that like is, it's a little that different. different. But you also have to be careful because if if you don't protect an IP in one place, then it can get released in the wild, which is why Disney is always suing like daycares for painting Mickey Mouse on the wall. That is exactly right. So it is something that Peloton has to stay up on, even if they aren't that personally upset about whatever it is that people are selling or doing yeah they do have to really stick to it um i know that there have been at times facebook groups that started as like just you know little tiny groups that had to they were told to stop selling their Mm -hmm. stuff um there's a lot of them out there that have had their hands slapped for things over the year for sure um i mean it's one of the reasons why for on the clip out we've talked about this before we went with a name that didn't use any aspect of peloton out of respect to their ip not everyone chooses that right no no they don't and and the thing is is that you know we were very careful about our name and we were very careful about how we worded things and we thought of all that way back at the beginning and some people don't think of it but also some people just don't care right uh and and so I think that, you know, Peloton, to be fair, they have to, they can't really split how they look at it. Now, I will also say, and this has been brought up before, it is strange how Peloton picks and chooses what they go after and what they don't. Like, if you remember the the Peloton closet, remember that? Yeah. Like, that lady was, I I don't, I can't remember her name. It's been so long since we've talked to her off the top of my head, but... um. She wasn't doing anything different than a lot of other websites and they shut down hers, but not 
others. Right. It was very strange. Very, very I strange. I feel like they were threatened by how big that got and how fast and how fast yeah, yeah i i do agree i mean peloton and i think also they were getting ready to move into the apparel world which, which nobody, we didn't know which we didn't know and she was basically helping people find uh clones of the outfits that instructors were wearing like where can you find them yeah and so they were like no no no, we're starting our own apparel line and our own apparel instagram and like and they they slapped that down hard they did they did having said that there's still others out there that do it yeah. and that seems not fair or cool but but i guess she could have changed her name and kept doing it i don't know but maybe yeah. it didn't seem to be the issue yeah it seemed that uh, i'll just leave it at that yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh, allegedly was not the issue yes. um so i don't know those are stories we say for the patreon <laughs> uh, yeah and i will also say there's always more than what meets the eye you know for and, sure. and keep in mind there are different people that work for peloton that used to work for peloton so something that maybe you could get away with in 2018 you can't get away with in 2024 vice versa so absolutely but it keeps changing Barry's always doing that A-B testing. He is. And I think he did an A-B test and landed on C, as in, <laughs> see, ya. see you later, free tier app. <laughs> you know, it, it, when we listened to the last earnings call, Barry talked at, I wouldn't say at length, but like a few sentences about right. the fact that um, they had really thought, Peloton had really thought that the free tier would be uh, a very good gateway to bringing in new members. Right. And they found that that was not true. And not only was it not true, but they actually got more traction and better traction with the paid tiers, which they found interesting. Yeah. So it's not crazy to me that it went away, but I did think it was interesting how they said not a word. Right. Like they just updated the website and yeah. there was nothing. Like like just silence. But I guess it's one of those things where it only aff- affects people who are using it. And yeah. it seems like not that many people were using it. Yeah, I, I would also, agree with that too. I would also love to know if I wonder if maybe if you were using the free tier level, if maybe it's still there for you. They're just not granting other people access to it. So like if you are a free tier app level member, you haven't noticed a change because you still have that access. But but no one else can come in. It was interesting because what they would do is update the classes. Like you only got access to some classes Mm -hmm. and then they would rotate that stock of classes. One, I always wondered how often they really rotated right. it and and two i wondered if it was often enough because if you want if you were a person who wanted to use peloton it does not feel like they could stay up with what you wanted to do right like i feel like i would get super frustrated like there's no way i could do it i would be yeah. like no i want all of it i want all of it or none of it <laughs> and I, that would drive me nuts i also wonder if what you're going to see is them pivoting back to a, a more opportunities for f- longer free trials well it's interesting you say that because look at me they reduced the free trial it was 30 days and now it's seven interesting so for the the app tiers that are left there's the the app one and the app whatever i don't remember what it's called but there's only two of them left and those both are now seven day trials instead of 30 day trials Hmm. and this is kind of going back to what I said earlier. This is where I'm like, the guide membership is your best bet. If because you're a cost conscious consumer and you want as much Peloton as you can get for as little as low of a price point as you can get, get a guide. Yeah, you get five memberships for twenty four dollars a month and you get access to all of the classes like that is the best deal it is. it's just hands down it's what i would do now obviously if you are a person who's only using it by yourself and you don't have four other people to share it with that's right. not as good of savings but for those of you that do <laughs> that's yeah. that's the way to go man absolutely outdoor running classes and programs have been added to the tread and tread plus so weird how they did this why is that because before you couldn't access these classes at all now you can access some of the classes but get this it shows up as a black screen so i don't know if this was an oops right or if they're getting ready to put those classes on there because now you can go in and sign up for let's say the the you can run program or the marathon out like the the marathon the road to the marathons all outdoor classes you can access it through the tread interesting but it just shows up as a black screen yeah you, you, they, but they're all audio classes so make of that what you will yeah you think they'd come up with some sort of static image to put up on your screen Although, I, I don't think there's even noise though <laughs> like you're not 
you're not taking the class. Like it's almost like it's messing with you. Yeah. You think you can take it, but you really can't. Oh, gotcha. And that's why I'm wondering if they're getting ready to put yeah. this or if this is just an oops. You know, the other thing is with a static image, though, you run the risk of burning that's an true. image into your screen. That's true. Especially if you're taking a long run. Yeah, that is very know? true. So like, you know, maybe that's what they're struggling with. Of do they put up a, a screensaver, some sort of video that moves even occasionally just so you don't damage your screen? I, yeah. I have no idea. I just thought it was interesting that it changed. For sure. Peloton Studios had information about March updates. And it's all things that we've told you about already because yes. we keep you uh, right on top of the information. But uh, they were announcing that back that in March that they had officially inter- used the block member and the uh, block. Hide tags and other members. Yes. And then they also talked about um, that you can use like FTSM to. FTMS is now available on for Android and iOS users. Thank you. So that means that if you're using like a Concept2 rower, you can get the data to go into your app in real time yeah. while you're taking the class. Yes, so, the app is now compatible with other owners, other rowers. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So like your brother-in-law, Steve, he can finally take a Peloton class and yeah. his Concept. But he won't. Rower. He won't. No. But he could. Yeah. And it also says the third one was, don't forget to check out our collections for curated Content. Which I refuse to include because Sorry. they've been there for years at this point. <laughs> so that was just lazy. They just wanted something else to add. They just, want they just wanted one. to remind you that they had them, that yeah. they existed. <laughs> so I thought that was lazy. You know, while we're talking about rowers, we should also mention that Meteor and Regatta games, which had been in beta testing, have gone away. They have. So do you think that means they weren't popular or do you think it means that they're getting ready to roll them out. I think it means that they're making changes and they will either do another beta test or they will be rolling it out. That's gotcha. what I think. Okay, so they're not, you don't think they're going away for good. No, I, I and I base that only on very, very seldom do com- beta testing get pulled completely. That's not based on any data that I have. That yeah. is just my gut. Gotcha. So I, I, I don't. They were popular. I know that they were popular based on everything that I've heard. So I can't imagine these not making it and unless it's about finances with the people that own these games. That would be the only thing that would hold it up, in my opinion. But it's odd that it would be with both of them. Agreed. But, you know, Agreed. although maybe that's the change they're making is the way it's set up. They got to get rid of one and not the other. Maybe but we're totally just. Now guessing. we're just guessing. It is just conjecture. Don't freak out if you like the games. Yes. Especially because it's conjecture for me. Like if it's conjecture from Crystal, like that's normally like pretty spot on. If it's me conjecturizing about this stuff, oh don't conjecturizing. Don't pay any. <laughs> don't don't let what I say upset you. <laughs> if you've learned nothing after almost ten years of this show, Jesus, has it been that long? It's twenty seventeen. So holy it's, shit! What seven and a half, eight? We've been doing this a long time. We have. Wow. So uh, yeah. Peloton is a really big thing in our lives, huh? Well, yours. Yeah. Well, I mean, it is yours, too. Yeah, adjacent. Peloton has released a spring wellness report. They did. Uh, it, it didn't, it, you know, there's not a lot to say. I think this is just kind of a way to get some press, yeah. you know? Right. Um, <laughs> like, uh, it's, weather's nice. Go outside. I mean, kind of, yeah. Like, it talked about, like, people, they they change what their perceptions are of what constitutes as a workout. They said the latest spring wellness trends accentuate the prominence of mobility training and cozy cardio sessions. They also said surprisingly that Gen Z outpaces baby boomers and in integrating wellness routines seamlessly into their daily lives through habit stacking things like mowing the lawn, vacuuming, gardening, even unloading the groceries are now viewed as legitimate forms of physical activity by many Now, this statistic, I believe. I have side eye. Statistics show that women are more inclined than men to categorize household chores as part of their workout regimen. Oh, yeah. That's because we're the ones doing it. (laughs) I'm not saying there are no men that do it because I know that there are. And thank you to all of you men who do, especially in men only households. Like, I can't even imagine how that would go if you didn't at least have one. Yes. They say statistically labor is divided more equally in same-sex households. I believe it. Because you can't fall into a gender stereotype. I mean, we totally do. We do. We fall into that so very much. But 
I still think that we do a fairly good job outside of the podcast of explaining things because <laughs> <laughs> you do you deal with things I don't want to deal with and I yeah, deal with things you don't want to deal for with. For sure. So that works out nicely. It does. And I will also say we're really we're both bad about like so the the two the two major gender stereotype tasks which are men do yard work <laughs> cut the grass things like that women clean the house yes we've jobbed both of them out yes and it's like and it's always kind of like you know whenever we're trying to like adjust the budget and you're like you know well maybe we should get rid of cleaning the house and i was like because they come in like once a week don't think that we or once every two weeks like it's not like we have a maid or something but but uh don't i wish yeah (laughs) but it but i'm always like but does that mean i gotta cut the grass (laughs) let's not touch either of those (laughs) i like that i like that i cut the grass for the first 40 five years of my life and i like not cutting the grass yeah and so i will take that deal you know your time is valuable you have to figure out how it works for you yeah but but it makes sense to me that that women would be more inclined than men to categorize it i mean my side eye was like i have a hard time classifying bringing in groceries as exercise now for sure maybe if i lived in new york and i gotta go up five flights of stairs or something but like taking the groceries from our driveway to our kitchen like that ain't exercise no, no. i'm pretty lazy brian might consider it exercise because he lifts so little that yeah. like he always like <laughs> his bringing in the soda cracks me up every time he's, he's just he like brings in one two liter at a time he's just <laughs> he's real close to just like pouring it into cups <laughs> and bringing it in yeah yeah i'm like what are you doing <laughs> speaking of time being valuable <laughs> His ain't. I know. Right. I'll tell you that. Oh my god. <laughs> and Peloton also put out some details this week about the Berlin Half Marathon. Yeah, so there's going to be um, a big celebration at the Berlin Half, and it's going to include the German instructors. And you know, uh, Peloton is officially teamed up with them just like they did with the new york roadrunners so like this is a partnership very similar to the new york roadrunners i'm Um, reading winds of war right now oh oh no so german updates are very upsetting to me i'm so sorry yes i didn't mean to trigger you i understand it's not like that anymore but that was the 80s that you that the book was written not yes. the world war i know that's not when the world war oh my occurred. god crystal thinks world war ii happened in 1980 <laughs> she's so dumb somebody I, will think that they will. They um, will they're already tweeting it i know like before you could even issue the instant <laughs> clarification putting an asterisk on that they've already tweeted listen to this dipshit <laughs> I'm sure. Okay, so Friday, May 4th, uh, there's going to be a a kickoff at the Berlin store. And then there's going to be an expo stand as well that day with uh, Eric Yeager. And then uh, later on, there's going to be tips and tricks that are going to be with Jeffrey and somebody else that I don't know. Who is Franziska Schobel? And who, uh, so I know know who the instructors are, but I don't know who Paulina, Paulina Stapa and uh, Franziska Schobel. I wonder if they are like uh, runners, like you know, oh, like like famous runners yeah, in Germany. Yeah, yeah. I don't know because I mean, even in America, that would be iffy if I would recognize runners. Um, and then on Saturday, there's the expo stand will be up starting at 10 a.m. And there's going to be uh, a warm up with Eric. There's going to be a warm up and shakeout run with Jeffrey and Irene. Mindset and motivation that afternoon with Eric and Andre Shirley. Um, and then also later that afternoon, there is going to be training with Tobias and Eugene Fink. I don't know who that is either. Also on Sunday, there's going to be a DJ and L and Peloton community and entertainment. It's like a cheering zone and that will be during the actual half marathon at 930 in the morning. So lots going on. That'll be so much fun. Wish we could just zip over to Berlin <laughs> and enjoy. I'll get right on that. Okay. And coming up after this, we're going to talk to Dr. Jen. She has tips for maintaining your energy. So stick around. Getting the psychological edge with Dr. Jen. Joining us once again via the magic of ZoomTube is Dr. Jen Mann, licensed marriage, family, and child therapist, and sports psychology consultant. She also has a wonderful app called No More Diets that you might want to check out. It's Dr. Jen. Hello. Hi. Hello. I think uh, I was going to 
I was going to ask a different question, but since Tom brought up your app, I'm going to switch gears. Uh, this question comes from Jennison, Jennifer Lanzen. Um, she is looking for motivation to get back into the swing of things. But more importantly, she switched recently to a plant-based diet, and she's not having enough energy for workouts. Now, she knows she needs to be eating more, but it's been difficult for her to find the right balance. Now, obviously, I realize you don't you're not like I can give all the things, but I know you obviously are vegan and you have your certificate. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Um, Certified in plant based nutrition. And also I'm a therapist and I've been a vegan for now uh, 14 years and a vegetarian since I was 10 years old. So, and I do have to say, when you initially transition to being vegan, a lot of the time it's a bit of an adjustment. And one of the things you want to do is find plant-based substitutes for the things you were eating before. And the challenge is always kind of processed foods versus not processed foods, which is a whole other complicated story. But I think if you are someone who, let's say you're used to eating chicken with dinner, there are a ton of plant-based options that are chicken substitutes. You also want to replace that chicken with other things like tofu and seitan and, you know, other kinds of kind of less processed sort of proteins. But I think that you want to make sure that you don't go kind of too far into like, You know, and it's funny because Kendall just posted, I think it was yesterday or or this morning, um, about kind of people and clean eating. She had posted a um, post about some recipe that had like Velveeta cheese in it and was getting a lot of shit from people of like, that's not healthy and was kind of saying like, an important part of being a healthy person is having that balance of foods that are kind of fun play foods that offer less nutrition and foods that offer more nutrition. And I think that that's important too. If if this person's finding that since switching to plant-based that they don't have as much energy, they really need to look at, and ideally maybe one or two meetings with a dietitian that actually has a specialty in plant-based and knows vegan, because you can get a lot of misinformation and wrong information from, believe it or not, even dietitians and nutritionists who are just not well versed in this area because there's so much misinformation out there, even in the community. So to really meet with an expert to see like, where are you coming short? Like, is it, are you not getting enough protein? Are you not getting enough carbs? Are you not getting enough fat? That a lot of the time people think like, oh, I can't have any fats. And we tend to make a lot of mistakes when we try to alter based on the trends or based on kind of what other people are doing. So I think that really looking at, are you getting a well-rounded, nutritious base? And it sounds like something is really missing for you. I also think it's important to take a look at, are you getting enough vitamin D? Are you iron deficient? And are you getting enough B? Because typically vegans, most people recommend vegans take a B and a D vitamin, but you also may want to do kind of one of those nutrition analysis where they take your blood and then they tell you kind of, oh, you're short on vitamin D or C or whatever, so that you can figure out what you need to do in your diet to kind of make sure that you are more well-nourished and that you're more well-balanced. But what I can tell you is that when you get it right, and right meaning like for your body, that my experience and the experience of the clients I worked with and the friends I have who have switched over, you should have more energy than you've ever had before. I have a a girlfriend who I encourage to take the plant-based nutrition class that I just took and she's taking it now and she's made the switch and she's like, I need like an hour less sleep. I can't believe how much energy I have. Like I'm chasing after my two kids and I actually have all the energy to do it. And it's it's amazing that when you are eating in a holistic way that works for your body and is nutritious, how much energy it does give you. So true. And, and the amount of volume that you can eat with vegetables is completely different than the amount of volume that you eat when you're not eating a ton of vegetables so i and also it's just it's so good for you just the fiber in fruits and vegetables and i highly recommend the book fiber fueled that talks all about kind of the microbiome and why this is important it's just 
when it comes to longevity, when it comes to really reducing your risk on cancers, high blood pressure, heart disease, which are like the three biggest killers in this country, diabetes, like the four biggest, it, it's, it makes such a huge difference. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for all that. Until next time, where can people find you? People can find me on social media, especially Instagram at Dr. Jen Mann, two ends on Jen, two ends on Mann. Wonderful. Instructors in the news. Callie Gullickson had her baby. She did. Her and her husband were uh, blessed with Cash James Howell, and he was eight pounds, nine ounces on Saturday morning when he was born. Isn't that sweet? Yep. Congrats to <laughs> Callie and family. I'm not as moved by babies. I know. Or cute animals. It's kind of annoying. <laughs> You're always trying to show me cute animals, and I'm like, yep, that's a squirrel riding a puppy. Yeah. What do you want me to do about it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's adorable. Yeah. I'm dead on little the inside. Little cowboy hat, little yeehaw hand going. <laughs> How can you not think that's adorable? Well, congrats to Callie and Chris. Milo Wedekind has launched her book. She did. And well, will, she is. It's hap- I guess by the time you hear this, Yes, by the time has. you hear this, it will have already that's happened. That's why you were going with that. Yes. I get it now. But I will also promise you, we will never feature this book on the book club. <laughs> It's true, but not because we don't like Mela. No, she seems fine. It's in German. It's in German and we can't read it. Yeah. I would love to, though. I would love to include it. My guess is at some point, I shouldn't even say this out loud because some sleazebag will probably do it, but they're going to do it anyway. Somebody will throw it through Google Translate and sell it on Amazon as a bootleg Aww, version. That's they my guess. probably will. Because they've been fighting that battle I authors know, have. I know. Well, I mean, I told you about what mm-hmm. happened to... Uh, this the lady this, who wrote made yeah, this, yeah I was gonna say this month's author yeah, yeah it's crazy 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 Kendall tool had a uh, post this week on the gram about a new TikTok trend which is punching women in the face yes uh, supposedly uh, specifically big men wandering around punching women in the face and uh, then uh, after Kendall had posted about it we also saw that there was a news article uh, that was out about it yeah because like we checked it because I was like <laughs> this sounds like bullshit and sounds it, like a chain letter your mother would write right is what like, you actually like hey said. if you flash your headlights at someone <laughs> the gang will kill you and I'm just like but will they though remember like the AIDS needles at yeah, gas stations that they're somehow affixing to door hand. now this seems to be true yes this one does y- just seem to be, be true. clear Sorry. but like when i first heard it i was like we should probably double check this because i this sounds unusual yeah yeah and sadly it is it seems to be accurate it does and the that's that's all i really feel comfortable saying because the the comments that were on her wall yeah got real gross yeah Yeah. let's just say that yeah people that are deathly afraid of crime seem to be deathly afraid of something else Mm -hmm. yeah so but uh but it is a horrible thing it is a horrible thing and and kendall gave a bunch of tips on how to be safe uh and so that's important and those tips by the way can be used anywhere sure you should always be aware of your surroundings you should always be careful with your headphones and not have them in and not paying attention and only looking at your phone yeah but Here. if you want to see that, we wrote an article <clears throat> over at the clubout.com that you can check out. Yes. Mariana Fernandez is doing the first ever 90 minute live run. Yes. And I am super excited about this. It is May 2nd, but it is at 6 30 p.m. Eastern on a Thursday. What are y'all doing to me? Yeah. Who wants to run 90 minutes at 6 30 p.m. on a Thursday? Yeah, we'll be at a movie. I know, I know. I, I so want to support Mariana, and I'm like, it's freaking movie night. I'm not going to be able to do it. Well, you can. You don't have to go to the movie with me. <sighs> it's okay. <sighs> well, we'll see what the movie of the week is. But I'll still use your AMC thing so nobody sits next to me. <laughs> Whatever works. We have the AMC monthly paths pass for both of us. And like whenever she doesn't go, I still book her ticket. <laughs> so no one sits next to me, at least on one side. Yeah. I have a place to set my phone and popcorn bucket. 
<laughs> well, this is really cool because um, this is going to be, like you said, the first live run from PSN and why people could book it and everything, get in and take it. But it's also exciting because we're seeing more and more of these longer form classes. For and sure. I'm very excited about that. It is good that they're starting to bring those back. I know that there's probably not as many of them as people were like, but it's nice to see that they're making a return. It is. So Camilla Ramon had a fun Instagram post this week. She did. She's doing, and I don't know how many times she's doing this. I'm unclear. Right. Maybe it's not even planned. I don't know. Yeah. But she has a series that she's calling Camilla on the street. So she goes into a neighborhood and I believe this one took place in Brooklyn. Okay. And she takes this giant wheel of prizes, right? Mm -hmm. And then she randomly talks to people on the street and then they spin the wheel to try to win. Well, some people were one of the things that you could win was a trip to the studio. So Camilla took this woman yeah. and like dropped everything and went to a class at the studio. But before the class, they got a little shopping spree. Yeah. Camilla took her into the store and she picked out an outfit and then Camilla got the matching one yeah, to wear. So they're with taking the class and matching out. Well, not. I Camilla's mean, not taking the class, but right, she's teaching it. <laughs> but what a dream! Yeah. What a dream! Like just what a what a incredibly nice, unexpected thing to do. You know, yeah, just cool. And and uh, our very own, I call her ours because she's our friend, Christina Sandifer. She was there when it happened. Oh, she, was she saw it. Oh, yeah. that's cool. <laughs> she saw it. <laughs> she's I thought, probably like, what is happening? Yeah, yeah. I thought that was really cool. Really cool. So that was really neat to be able to experience. So I got to hear all the details about it from Christina and, and I thought, well, that is just really neat. You never hear about instructors doing this specific thing. This is completely new, unprecedented. I love it. Hey, uh, stick around. Coming up after this, we're going to tell you about the latest artist series. We're going to give you your next bingo call and we'll talk about the TCO's top five. Peloton artist collaboration. An email we got. I'm very confused about. But. Okay. The latest artist series features Jose Gonzalez. Who's a Swedish artist. Oh. And this is a British artist series. I'm wow. sorry. I said British. I meant to say, I meant to say German. <laughs> it's a German artist series. Uh-huh. And he's from Switzerland. Swedish. That's not the same thing, is it? No, Swedish would be Sweden. Yes. I. Uh, Switzerland would be Swiss. <laughs> Let's see if I can mess this up anymore. But I just thought that was interesting. Like it, it, it yes. sounded like this was going to be like a Spanish class, like Spanish or Mexican. Yeah, yeah. And that's what you get for basing things off of words. Um, but uh, <laughs> but I mean that's a very Spanish name. Clearly, his heritage is is Spanish somewhere along the line. He was born in Sweden to Argentine parents. Okay, there we go. Yeah, and uh, and so it, this is also interesting because typically when we have these artist series, there's multiple classes, and this is one specific class. It's a 30-minute yoga flow with Nico. Okay. So, very different. Very much so. And I guess I should have said his heritage is Hispanic, not Spanish. That is so, true. But, uh, but yes. Past guest update. So we have an update from Eric Tostrid, who was a guest many, many years ago. Yeah. But we still keep in touch because of his uh, charity event, Peloton for Parkinson's. We do. And it is coming up on April 27th this year. So if you haven't had a chance to sign up for that, you just hop on over there and do it now. Make yeah. sure you can get involved. Absolutely. And that, this is an event that like, and you can do this one in real life or virtual. Yes, you they can. added the virtual component during COVID because mm -hmm. that's all they could do. Right. But they kept it alive. Yeah. And now they do both. So. Yeah. I think it's like their ninth year or something. something. It's been a while. It's been a while. Yeah. Very cool. He's raised a lot of money, too. Absolutely. Very has. worthy cause. For sure. New content. So before we dig into the TCO top five, let us do bingo call out number two. Get there. Okay. Hannah Frankson. Ta-da. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And now the TCO top five. So every week, uh, we ask you what the best classes of the week are. And then if we agree with you, we put them in a list <laughs> and we yell them back at people. So uh, the first one in no particular order is 
Number one favorite, Peloton Strength. Yeah, this class was taught by Rebecca Kennedy back on December 4th of 23. It's a 10-minute arms and shoulder strength. Now, Tracy Lamb said that this was only 10 minutes, but it was a tricep burner. Her triceps are really sore, and they hurt for two to three days after. Seven of the 10 minutes are spent on tries. Yikes. Yeah. That's yikes, a lot. A Rooney. Uh, number two, favorite Peloton Row Boot Camp. Okay, so March 26th, there was a 30-minute pop punk boot camp with Katie Wong. Sonia Norman loved it. She said Katie's 30-minute pop punk boot camp from 326 was the first workout after her time off, and you could tell she was so happy to be back. The workout was great, and the playlist was perfect. Some 41 on that playlist. Yeah. You know what? Come on over to the Patreon episode this week, and I'll tell you a funny story about some 41 okay. being shit bags oh great <laughs> love that love that item number three favorite peloton ride okay so this was from uh dennis morton on march 30th it was a 45 minute classic rock ride uh douglas loved this he said that it was one of the most eclectic sets king crimson and dennis was fired up more than usual though that's hard to believe <laughs> By the way, Douglas, thank you for emailing me since apparently uh, the social media is not your thing. I appreciate <laughs> you still finding a way to get this in. I just like prog rock on the Peloton. <laughs> Seems like an odd. Is that prog rock? Yeah, that's prog rock. Man. I, I have never heard of King Crimson. That's because it's prog rock. Okay. And Isn't prog like, rock like uh, we went to go watch a show once at it was like at a it, it, we were at a um, casino. Okay. And we we watched it in a casino. Alan Parsons project. That's it. So Alan Parson definitely has prog rock songs, but most of his big songs I would not consider prog rock. Okay. He still had like hit singles. Okay. But um but pro, but Alan Parson definitely has a foot in the prog rock world. Some of the songs he played that night were prog rock though. Yeah. He, yeah, yeah. There he played was some stuff I was like it was, huh? Yeah, <laughs> for sure. And that was the progress. And then he'd play a song that you've heard. And I was uh, like, oh, okay, I recognize this. Because like a lot of his stuff also ends up kind of getting classified as like soft rock or yacht rock. Sure. Because he's written some. And that makes sense too. Yeah. He also wrote that famous intro that you hear when the Chicago Bulls take the court. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like the intro to a song that then sounds nothing like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, I remember he played that song that yeah, night, of course. Because it starts with that, and then you're just like, oh, and then it just goes into this totally different song. I forget what song it is, but it's a big hit, but yeah. But King Crimson is like a prog rock. Prog rock. Prog rock. It's like Got a prog it. rock band's prog rock. Understood. Yes. Okay. So uh, item number four, favorite Peloton run. This was March 30th, a 75 minute pop run with Bex Gentry. Um, Katherine uh, Exani, Canada Kath, she celebrated this class. She said that essentially it's an interval run. The time absolutely flew by with both Bex signature coaching and storytelling and an absolutely lit leaderboard. There were over a thousand people. I took this on Saturday while I was outside mm -hmm. and it was it was really good. It was really, really good. It was very fun. Bex just does an amazing job of telling stories while you're running. You just you forget you're running. Yeah, like that's the best in my opinion. And then uh, finally, item number five, your favorite unstackable. Yes. And I know 75 minutes seems like that would be, but she kept it at a very easy, easy and manageable pace. So instead, we're going to go with a 45 minute power zone max ride with Matt Wilpers also on March 30th. This one came from Mindy Jensen. She said it was tough, but doable. He provides just enough recovery to hit the next block hard. But 45 minutes later and lots of sweat, she was done. <laughs> Love it. And now let's take a look at this week in Peloton. So there is all sorts of uh, stuff every week at Peloton, and this is their what they want you to know about. This is the this is how they wrap it all up. Yes. Yeah, but we have to talk about metrics classes because people are seeing the word metrics and they're like, oh, this is like the metrics classes we used to have. No, it's not. No, all your classes are now in kilometers. <laughs> no, it's not that either. But metrics classes used to be all based on just like it would still be a same Peloton class, but they would base it on what your speed was. And like it, it was all about the numbers. Okay. This still is. But now there's no chit chat. There's no shout outs and instructors only jump in to give you insight into the class plan and cue is needed. Otherwise, all music. 
That's so it. the people who are like, I wish the instructors would shut up. Metric classes are for you. There you go. So these people that are saying metrics classes are back, they are wrong. <laughs> they are not back. This is new. Gotcha. And I also have to give a special shout out to Benny Adami because he messaged me with this and he is the first German instructor that is going to be teaching these classes and he wants to know from everybody how we like them. So if you, this would also be a great opportunity if you don't know, you haven't had a, lot, a chance to take a lot of the classes in other languages, there's yeah. not a lot to say. So these would be good ones. You still get a little bit of their... You get a little sample. Yeah, their a persona. Little, you little know? Whitman sampler. Exactly. But you don't get the one with the gross nougat in it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, we also have Deep House Yoga Flow. Yes. Anna Greenberg is teaching a 30 minute class this one comes up on april 6 and uh we expect that the playlist will be lit okay evening stretch evening stretches with maddie they're fan favorites uh they were gonna have a new one a new 10 minute evening stretch dropped on it will be dropped on demand on april 5th at 4 p.m eastern and finally standing core everybody loves the standing core there's a new one coming from rebecca kennedy on thursday the 4th at 10 a.m eastern Adrian is uh, launching Tag Team Row Boot Camp. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, the first one was actually this morning with uh, Tune Day, and <laughs> they were they were already cracking jokes at like 6 a.m. because Tune Day does not do early morning classes. Yeah. But the, the gist is that an instructor shows up and does the the tag team portion of it so like he will do the rowing they do the strength training like that's the idea okay. tag teaming they did some of these a while back i think katie had done these but um adrian is going to have four special guest instructors it's going to be tune day matt uh emma and then uh it's going to be andy so those are going to be taking place once a week throughout the month of april i can't wait to hear what everybody thinks about these i think they will be a lot of fun Cliff Dwenger is set to debut Glorious Gospel. Yes, he is going to be uh, teaching a Glorious Gospel class. I'm not confident if this will be continuing like, ongoing right, right. or if this was a special one off mm -hmm. uh, for I know some people that would be like perfectly timed with easter sure. so i'm not sure if this is a one-off or he, you know he does a lot of gospel classes so gotcha. not sure how this is going to be different or not and if you just need more jesus in your life kindle tools got your back yeah she uh had an easter ride that people were very excited about and then she followed up the easter ride that same day with a low impact ride so it aired on march 31st um and it was all gospel uh, music so if that's your thing then you are you've got lots going on here between kendall For and sure and all the other classes with with cliff also peloton uh celebrated trans day of visibility on march 31st they did and four new classes dropped so uh that day they were all dropped on demand so like maddie had one and uh jeffrey mckeckern had one uh i took the outdoor I don't remember. No, I started to take it, but it was only 20 minutes. And I needed a 30 minute class, but it was with Jermaine Johnson. Um, so there were four different classes, like I said, and um, all of those can be find, found in the collections, the Pride collection. And it's right along the top under 2024. Awesome. That makes total sense. Yes, it does. In case you missed it. Peloton Apparel teased a new Lululemon release this week. Yes, and uh, Holly Yoga, Kimberly. Heard of her. She was, she was like, an actual lemon uh, from Lululemon. Because <laughs> it's like lemon yellow. It cracked me up. It is very yellow. It is very yellow. Uh, I, I don't know if that will be the only color that will be dropping, because we haven't seen it yet, or if we can expect that it's just going to be bright spring colors in general that we can expect. Don't know. My guess is you will know before I do, because it will probably hit Come before, out before the episode. this episode yeah, does. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Peloton Birthdays. We have not one, not two, but three birthdays this week. Oh, let's get to them. So birthday number one, Jermaine Johnson on April 5th. On April 6th, you have Allie Love. And on April 7th, it's Jennifer Jacobs. Well, happy birthday to all. Happy birthday. Enjoy Me. your free pot sticker at TGI Fridays <laughs> on the clip out. <laughs> Checking in with the Peloton community. 
Joining us today via the magic of ZoomTube is Samantha Farrell. Hey, Samantha, how's it going? Good. How are you guys? We're good. We're so glad to have you here. And by good, I mean, well, you've listened to all of our uh, <laughs> <laughs> our complaints for the last all 10 my, minutes. <laughs> my surliness with my technology. We made it work, right? Yeah. <laughs> we did. We did. We were having some technical difficulties and you were very patient. Yes. So thank you. Um, okay. So I always like to start with this. How did you originally find Peloton and where was it in the timeline? Yeah. Um, so I think it's a funny story, right? Because then I feel like everybody probably says the same thing, but pandemic wise, right? Couldn't go to the gym anymore. Tried to find a different solution at home. And so Black Friday of 2020, me and a couple of my friends ordered the Peloton with the Black Friday deal. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Now, when you say a couple of friends, like you guys live together or like, no. OK, or like you Just, each got one. I need more details. Yeah. <laughs> Lifelong friends. We all like went into it like, let's each get a Peloton. We'll ride together. And I think I'm the only one who's still riding. At this point, so. <laughs> <laughs> Ratting them out. That's great. <laughs> That's okay. They won't care. <laughs> well, they clearly won't listen to this. I, I can't imagine if they're not using a Peloton that they're listening to a Peloton podcast. That would be an odd choice. It would be an odd choice. Well, I'm going to send it to them and make them listen to it. Now. Okay. That's, <laughs> That's good friend. Good friend right there. That's yeah. their penance. It is. It is. Okay, so were you a person that like worked out all the time before before the pandemic, before Peloton, or have you like had dips and valleys when it comes or dips and peaks when it comes to working out? Yeah, I mean, I was always active growing up, you know, playing sports, soccer and basketball, ran track, you know, and then then you kind of take a break. I feel like after college, just, you know, time out for a little bit. And then um, I got into Beachbody, I want to say in like 20. 14 or 2015 and that kind of jumped start back in and then I started boxing so I joined a boxing gym and I really liked that um and then I joined a kickball league so oh, I've been fine. doing kickball for like the last seven years I think now and that's just something fun to do once a week you know get together and have some beers and play kickball <laughs> that's great so I'm curious about the boxing gym was that intimidating I think of that as a very male space was <laughs> am I yeah. wrong or it, you, it can be because I went to two. I went to one that was called Uppercut that's no longer around here. And that was a straight boxing gym where they would do sparring and everything. I never got to that level because I didn't really want to punch other people. I just thought it was fun to kick and punch a bag. <laughs> and then uh, well, my, guess like is, more... <laughs> my guess is you probably wanted to punch other people. It's just you didn't want them to punch back. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think I don't think get back up if they took a punch from me, honestly. <laughs> wow, nice. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> She's like, so ask a question like that again, mother. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was projecting. That's how I feel. There's lots of people I'd like to hit, but then they might hit back and what would I do? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She's like, that's no, why I, I was training. <laughs> I never wanted to be at that level. I just, I like the workout. I mean, it's really like full body and very like core centric and everything. So like, it's, it's a great workout. And that's why I think I really got into it. And I just, it was something different, right? Cause you sure. kind of get tired of being in like the same routine constantly sometimes. And, and then also going to a gym, you know, you don't have somebody most of the time to really kind of guide you and tell you what to do. So doing something different like that, I liked to mix it up in that sense. That yeah. makes sense. No, it makes a lot of sense. I, I think um, I have a, a fight camp at home and I feel like using that kind of like makes me feel like a badass every time I do, you know, and like yeah. I'm not great at taking the classes on Peloton where like they're their um shadow boxing yeah which i know is really good for you but like i've been spoiled by having the bag i have to still hit the bag because i'm like <laughs> i can't just hit the air i'm used to hitting the bag <laughs> <laughs> just just throw up on your phone the, the the app for the shadow boxing next to your bag and then you'll be just set i feel like <laughs> yeah totally yeah you can make it work for sure um i think i did something once on tonal where they wanted me to shadow box and how, i was how just did like, that go for you it, well i well let me start with the first part of the sentence. I did something on tonal once. <laughs> it was almost as bad as the time I got tricked into dance cardio. <laughs> it was bad. I haven't been tricked into that yet. It was bad. I, I don't have the moves. Yeah. I, I tried it once. Uh, 
I don't have the moves either. That's what I learned. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. you think you're doing it and then you then, oh my God, you can actually see it played back. It's terrible. It's oh. awful. Oh, oh, I knew I wasn't doing it. Oh, like I, I thought I was kind of doing it, but no, it turns out I wasn't. Oh, I knew a... there was no way I was even close to okay, doing okay. it. Okay, <laughs> okay. You win. I was, I was like, this is bad. I think in a past life, I was like, I don't know. I was in that town that Kevin Bacon lived in in Footloose. And you couldn't, I nobody was, could dance. I was Jonathan Lithgow. <laughs> That's no dancing life. here. Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, so um, once you got Peloton, um, what has your evolution with like the different kinds of classes been? Yeah. Well, and again, I feel like a lot of people might say this too, but when I got it, my friends are all like, oh, we're not going to get like, obsessed or anything like we're, we're just going to get it for something to do at home during the pandemic and i totally fell in <laughs> it is welcome so fun. I, know. <laughs> I, I think a lot of people say the same thing i'm, I'm sure because i, I kind of looked at people i'm like really you're that obsessed with like a workout program and here i am that obsessed buying apparel going to the studio doing as much as i can doing as many meet and greets here in minnesota <laughs> as i can <laughs> so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, overall, I mean, I like, I take all the classes. I have the bike and the row, um, which I bike primarily, I'd say. The row is fun to mix in a couple of days a week, but it's also a lot of work. It <laughs> is. Different. Yeah. Um, and I love the lifting classes. I do a lot of strength classes on there as well. So, I mean, I kind of keep it pretty well rounded. I don't like to run personally, but. Sometimes I will. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, the nice thing is, is you can always still walk while you take a run class or you could take a walking class. The hiking classes yeah. are amazing as well. Lots of options. Yeah, I like their outdoor programs. Um, I think they're, they're great listens. And, and I remember like when Tunde did that podcast for a while, I did a triathlon sprint. So not like just a little sprint. <laughs> and I had her podcast in my ear throughout the entire bike ride and run that I had to do for it. So. That's amazing. <laughs> what about um, what about like yoga or meditation? Do you do anything like that? I should do more of that. <laughs> um, I mean, I've done a handful of the yoga stuff or like more than that, I guess. But it's nice to mix a yoga in for stretching because I'm not the best stretcher. I should take more time and stretch more, but I'm not very good at it. <laughs> But uh, so, yeah, yoga is nice to mix in every now and then just to get that aspect in. I feel like um, meditation, usually at nighttime, if I'm, you know, a little anxious at bedtime, the sleep meditations are great. Yes, like they are. A lot. Yes, they are. Yeah. Uh, I don't know about you, but Ross's voice is is wonderful at putting me to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever seen the Cody ones on there? And I'm always kind of like. I can't, for meditation. See, I, that, that is my thought right there. I'm like, I mean, I know he's he's very funny, but he doesn't come across as like soulful and i've never tried it which is terrible i should try it before i knock it I have, you know i have it, it's it's a different vibe for cody i'll tell you that <laughs> it's so not he, bad i just did not expect it i guess so he takes it like not i don't want to be like take it serious like i can't but i mean he's he's such a a performer he's got a shtick and so he he drops it for the meditations yeah, you know, huh? he's, yeah. Usually he's loud and vocal. Yeah, and you know he's like, "Hi, I'm Cody Rigsby. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Peloton." <laughs> I love so, it. Yeah, way different. <laughs> Try it out <laughs> next time. Oh, well, I might have to give it a shot. Well, um, <laughs> you mentioned going to the studio earlier. Um, when was your first uh, journey, and how did it go? Yeah, so my first journey was in February last year, um, and few months prior to that, I was getting close to my 1000th ride. So I asked my husband, I'm like, can we go to New York for my 1000th ride? Like, I would just be fun. And we love New York. And he's like, yeah, let's do it. Okay. So yeah, I decided to, I had to book the classes first, right? Because you kind of got to get that settled. And then we planned the trip around the classes. <laughs> um, so I was able to get into three classes that weekend. We went and did my 1000th ride and the studio live with Emma. And it was great. <laughs> and the studio surpassed any expectation I had. It's such a fun experience and it's everybody's so positive and it's just nice. And all the members there are so nice. Like I've made so many friends and I had friends from Instagram too, that live in like New York and New Jersey that go a lot. So I got to do classes with them and meet them in real life. And yeah. And then we went back in December. <laughs> My husband's a big kiss fan. <laughs> so we went to go see kisses final 
final shows in New York. Did you get to go to like the actual final one? Yeah. Oh, wow. that's awesome. I mean, because so I know cool. that like they did multiple, so I know if you actually go to go to the very, very last one. That's really cool. Yeah, we went to, or I should say, he went to both. I okay. gave him one. So I went to the final one with him. <laughs> but yeah, he went to both shows two nights we were there. I was like, all right, that's what you're going to do. I just walked around New York by myself, so, <laughs> which was fine. <laughs> yeah, I. I think I'd probably choose to do that too. Like if I had two nights, like I would, I, yeah, like I would definitely go to one show because that's iconic. How can you not? Right, sure. right? But like, yeah, if you only have two nights in New York, I'm going to take the other night and walk around. I would have made the same choice. <laughs> yeah. Oh, for sure. No, Especially I'm, when my guess is the sets lists are probably pretty similar. <laughs> like it's not like you're seeing a radically different show. Is well, my- I'll tell you this. I've seen them four times now. It's been the same show every time. So. Okay, I feel like the kiss is her monkeys. <laughs> yes, I was thinking the same thing. So my favorite band in the world is the monkeys. And so Crystal has seen the monkeys probably five or six times. I it, I have lost count. Yeah. Are we talking solo acts or when they were together? I was just counting when they were actually performing <laughs> under the moniker or if you will, monkey or the monkeys. And so, but we've also seen, you know, each one of them solo. Well, except for Davey, of course, but, uh, and so, um, and I couldn't even tell you how many times I've seen them 20, 30 over since the eighties. And so, um, but yeah, she has seen and now knows a lot of stuff about the monkeys, probably in the same way that, you know, a lot of things about kiss just through osmosis. Yes. You probably yeah. have random kiss uh, like trivia going in there. You guys should go to a tri- yeah. the kiss trivia night. <laughs> well, I got to say, when we went to New York for that weekend, it was insane because all of New York was like turned into like kiss invaded New York. Like yeah. taxi cabs were like kiss painted and all the Metro passes had kiss on them. <laughs> oh, that's cool. We had to find all these little pop ups where kiss stuff was happening. It was just like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I did and think I, that was really cool. Like, if you're going to go out, go out with a bang. For sure. Like, that's amazing. I thought that was yeah. so smart. <laughs> Love well, it. And then I got into the pit, the kiss Peloton ride with Dennis. Oh, how fun. I figured I, I had to, right? Right. You, know? you might as well finish off the theme. <laughs> <laughs> and the week we were leaving, I got an email saying um, if I wanted to register to get my face painted, I'd have priority CD for the class and my husband's like you have to do it i'm like i really don't want my face painted but i sure so i did it <laughs> so yeah i'm like the second bike with a big star on my face <laughs> like, that's awesome that is awesome you have to send us that picture yes i need that picture you guys have it okay yeah, okay. okay awesome that's amazing <laughs> so did does your husband do peloton did he do the kiss ride no <laughs> wait 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 you went to a kiss concert and he didn't go to a peloton class it's not really his thing i i've tried don't get me wrong i try we have a bike and a row like you've got options you know i am shocked and appalled at a too. husband who wouldn't do peloton yeah for their i bet wife. you are i this bet is... you're like oh this guy seems great <laughs> <laughs> go listen to the monkeys and kiss and not do peloton yeah. <laughs> <laughs> got a lot in common. <laughs> there was an in-studio monkeys ride. I might cave. Really? Okay. I'm always saying that because they'll never do it. I'm going to contact Jen Sherman. <laughs> <laughs> they, they might. I don't see why they wouldn't. Uh, some of the ones lately, I'm like kind of like, oh. They're running I mean, I out of the Artie series rides, too. <laughs> they're, they're like, I don't know. Crazy Town, the Dave Clark Five. I don't know what's left. Crazy Town. Didn't Steve they only Lawrence have that one and Edie song? Gourmet. I... <laughs> oh my word. Okay, so you went back in December. It sounds like that was an amazing experience. Um, okay, well, out of all the different classes you went to, which was your favorite? I would say the class that brought me the most energy and fun was. Camila's reggaeton 60 minute ride. It was her first time doing a 60 minute ride. It was like a 7 a.m. on a Friday. And it was my 999th ride. <laughs> so it was the day, the same day I was doing the 1000, but got in that one first. And the, I've never heard so many people like just so energetic. And I remember like there was even like complications with getting like the recordings clean, cleaned out and ready to go. Like the, I don't think the ride went live on the on the Peloton app for like a day or two because it was just so chaotic in there. <laughs> so now I'm like, starting no. to think that maybe <laughs> our technical difficulties were your fault. Oh, it's you. Yeah. You're the common denominator. <laughs> 
her eyes. So she was like, what? <laughs> Sorry. She thought I was serious. For a she did. She doesn't know you well enough. No, she doesn't. Sorry. <laughs> I'm just, no. just saying they see, they, these problems seem to be following. <laughs> yes, it couldn't be because technology. Yeah. <laughs> Suddenly I'm the Joe Rogan podcast. I'm just asking questions. <laughs> You decide. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm still mystified that your husband wouldn't take the kiss right. I would think that would be like the the little that cherry on the top of your kiss journey. Huh? He wasn't into I feel it. Like, I, I think he's taken like 20 rides, maybe 25. Like, okay. But, you know, we've had it for three and a half years now. So Tom's had zero. I've had zero. Zero. So, so. I think he's doing it out of spite at this point. He's just like, hmm. Keep not doing I it. know <laughs> that's why Tom's doing it. It's I my know. brand. Yeah, yeah. It's my brand. They do have a lot in common. That's <laughs> amazing. <laughs> uh, so, are you hoping to go back soon? Are you? Do you have like uh, another? Oh, I see. Yes, you're excited. I'll, I'll be back in July. All uh, right. I'm so not, will kiss probably. I'm hoping I can make <laughs> Peloton work. We're going to go see Billy Joel's final show at Madison Square Garden. Oh, I want to do that one so bad. I guess we're going to New York. Because I that I'm a yeah, we have similar music tastes. Yeah, clearly. Yeah. <laughs> I love Billy Joel. I think Billy Joel is just an icon in yeah. himself. Have you been able to see him live before? You just want to see the yeah. last show, which I don't blame you. He's amazing. Yeah. Well, we're doing a little family trip. My my father-in-law and brother-in-law have never been out there. And we're all, we all love Billy Joel. And we just kind of came across it. We're like, we should just do it. And so we booked it. And we're going to do a Yankees game, which I haven't done that yet either. So I got to try to find a fit Peloton into this schedule at some point in time, which will happen. I guarantee it. But... <laughs> <laughs> okay well good luck that sounds like an early morning for you whatever day that it works <laughs> yeah <laughs> so i have a question for you that you might not know the answer to but since you're following the billy joel thing i'm just going to ask you because i haven't been able to go down this rabbit hole yet i know that this is his last show for his madison square garden residency is he mm -hmm. saying that this he will never play there again like just under, like in two years will he pop up and do a show there or is he saying Ooh. that like now i'm done and this place can go to hell <laughs> what is he? He's got to be like, is he 78 now or 74? I, I thought he was 75. I thought I saw 75? him recently. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I I wouldn't put it past any artist to go back out. I mean, yeah, I, for sure. I understand 74. like there's got to be a point where you got to say you're coming to an end, but that doesn't mean you can't come back. Right. So, yeah, because he's not sure, positioning. Sure the money is right. He'll, yeah, he'll be there. <laughs> and he's not positioning it as a farewell tour. He's just, he's been doing this residency for a long time. Mm -hmm. And he was like, now I'm done. I that That's enough. I'm not doing it anymore. So I was just, yeah. I know he liked it because he could just take, I think for a while, I think he was, he was just taking a boat across from his house. Just showing up. And he could just, it was like a 20 minute boat ride and he could hop off and do a show. Oh, to do that. That would be amazing. Yeah. I just want to live 20 right? minutes from New York. Yeah. Uh. Can you imagine all the classes? I know, me too. <laughs> I do, but I don't. Like every time we're there, I love it. And then I think about the logistics of what it would take to actually make it happen. And then I'm like, oh, I guess we're just going to continue living in the Midwest. <laughs> we just have too much room here. So it's like impossible to think about moving that far and like the expense of it. It's ugh. Yeah. Yeah, the we, real we, estate. Every time we come back, we say the same thing. We're like, we could do this. And then we get home, we're like, mm, yeah. we couldn't do this. And then you calculate what a house is worth there and what a house is worth in New York. And yeah. you're just like, oh, thank you. Exactly. We'll just fly in occasionally. Yeah. <laughs> have the best of both worlds. Yeah. So right? uh, uh, do you have a preferred instructor? I do. Um, I mean, I like them all, right? There's not... Everybody gives you the moods you want, but no matter what, I will probably always do a Bradley Rose ride first. If there's a new Bradley Rose, I'm hopping on it. I love his energy. He's so funny. And it's just it's always a good time, you know? And yeah, so Bradley Rose would be my favorite. That's awesome. awesome. I like the fact that you have a favorite. So many people are like, well, like this one and this one, I want to pick. And then so for this time, and you're just like, no, it's Bradley Rose. The rest of them can <laughs> well, suck okay, it. Okay, then for strength, I like Rebecca Kennedy. Don't ruin it. Uh, <laughs> for the row, I like Ash. Ash is my favorite on the row. I got to do a live row class with her and she's so fun. I loved, yeah. I loved her that energy class, is so high. Like I haven't taken a class with her live, but I mean like in person, but she comes across so like so much energy through the screen. I'm sure it's sky high in person. Yeah, and yeah, I, she just hypes us all up the entire class like she's talking to us i keep meaning to retake mine but it's a 30 minute row so i'm also like i don't really want to do another 30 minute row right now <laughs> um, 
So she talks to you the entire time. She's calling you out the whole time. It's just was such a fun energy class. So. That's, that's great. So uh, do you have any advice for people just now entering the world of Peloton? Um, yeah. So I would say don't be afraid to try things. Um, I think people get intimidated when they see, you know, Tabata or Hills or Climbs. And I say don't. I mean, don't be intimidated by what the type of class is, because no matter what, there's going to be something in your range for you to be able to obtain and to manage throughout that ride. And it gives you a good experience to try other styles of rides out and also stretch. Make sure you stretch a lot. (laughs) And that (laughs) means you're going to do more yoga. That's what I heard. You're going to do more yoga. Yeah, I got I to stretch those hips out a little bit more. (laughs) Also, paint your face. Like Ace Freely. Yes. Yes. Every class. <laughs> Every class. Every class. Um, I don't think we got a chance to find out your leaderboard name. What's your leaderboard name? Oh, it's uh, MN Hopscale, like Minnesota Hopscale. <laughs> I love that. I like beer. So, you know. <laughs> oh, I just thought you like buttons. <laughs> <laughs> She does not know what I, to do with you, Tom. Reading <laughs> uh, the fifth on that. <laughs> awesome. Well, th- thank you so much for taking time out of your day to join us. We we really appreciate it. And uh, before we let you go, let everybody know where they can find you on the social medias if you would like to be found. Yeah, I am also on Instagram at MN Hopscale as well. And I post a lot about beer and Peloton. So you could enjoy <laughs> those both with me. Um, yeah. And then leaderboard name MN Hopscale. That's it. That's awesome. awesome. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you guys. This was fun. I really appreciate it. So I guess that brings this episode to a close. Until next week, where can people find you? People can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash Crystal D. O'Keefe. They can find me on all the rest of the socials and the Peloton leaderboard at Clip Out Crystal. And you can find me on Twitter at Roger Kubert or on Facebook at facebook.com slash Tom O'Keefe. You can find the show online at facebook.com slash The Clip Out. While you're there, like the page, join the group, and don't forget our Patreon at patreon.com slash The Clip Out, where for five bucks a month, You get all sorts of bonus content, you get ad-free episodes, and we like you a little extra. Mm -hmm. So that's it for this one. Thanks for tuning in. And until next time, keep pedaling. And running. And rowing. And rowing.